our merciful and loving Father. We are so thankful, our Father, that you bless us to be able to congregate before you, to listen to your holy words. We ask your Father to please be with us as we listen to your holy words. Open up our hearts and our minds of understanding that we may be able to understand your truth and we'll be able to continue on fulfilling our duties in serving and glorifying the most holy name. We pray, our Father, that you would please bless the households of all of your children, especially those that are suffering persecutions, those that are being oppressed, those that are in jail, we ask your Father to please throw your loving arms around all of your children and continue to guide us and help us to be able to overcome any obstacles that we encounter in this life and continue on serving and glorifying the most holy name. We pray, our Father, that you would be with our brother that will teach your words. Guide him with your Holy Spirit so that he may be able to teach your word with clarity, so that everyone that is listening will be able to ins be inspired and go on fulfilling their duties and serving the most holy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask that you please be in our midst, and we pray that you would always take our prayers to the Father, asking the Father to hear our prayers and forgive our sins so that we can continue to serve and to glorify the most holy name. We truly believe, our Father, as we listen to your holy words, that you've forgiven us for any sins that we've committed, and that you will always bless your children, because we ask everything in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. Beloved, uh, beloved brothers and sisters, um, the lesson that we are to study is the power of God's words can truly be felt in our homes. If what we are taught to us in the worship service are implemented in every household. We never stop teaching the words of God during the Bible studies, during the worship services, and even in our daily prayers. We are always taught the words of God. Now, implementing this in our homes, in our everyday life, this should be found amongst us so that we would be able to reach what the uh, administration have taught us, even during a time of Brother Iranya G. Manalo and Brother Felix Y. Manalo in striving to make us reach spiritual maturity. Now, what does the, what is it that those who lead you would want to happen. And that is the reason why that they continue to teach us the words of the Lord Almighty God. Let's read here in Ephesians 4, 12 through 13. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Why is it that we never stop in preaching the words of God? Practically every day we receive God's words if we attend the committee prayer or the daily prayers, the Bible studies, and also our worship services that we do in the weekends. Brothers and sisters, so that we will be able to fulfill what the Bible is saying for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. What purpose to edify the body of Christ, which is the body we already know that is the church. And what is the reason of we striving to do this for the sake of our brothers and sisters or for all of us so that we will be able to come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. The perfect man that we know is Ephesians 2.15, the one new man. Colossians 1.18, Christ is the head, the body is the church. So let us have the spirit of striving for the perfection of the unity of our faith so that we would be able to fulfill 
what the administration have wanted from the time of brother Iranya G. Manalo and from the time of brother Felix Y. Manalo for us to reach that to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So what is this one thing that we should all look into ourselves to find out if we are in the same spirit of what was taught to us in reaching spiritual maturity. 13.5 of 2 Corinthians, examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? What is one of these things that we should look within ourselves? We have to ask ourselves or examine ourselves if we are still in the faith. Why is it so important for us to ask if we are still in the faith? Because if not, then we have been disqualified. Others may be saying to us that you're not in the faith anymore. You've been expelled. We already have clarification of that. We have been expelled from the synagogues and not from the church. In fact, we are the ones whom God continue to remain as members of the church of Christ. For we fulfill the very role of those who are true members of the church of Christ. That we are very small in number or a very small remnant. So we know we are still in the faith. We have examined ourselves. We are still members of the church of Christ. What is the meaning that Christ is in us to see if he's really in us? Let's read in 2.20 of Galatians. I read, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What does it mean that if we are in Christ? Well, we know that we live in the flesh. We live by the faith in the Son of God. And how is that? We should have the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. He humbled himself and became obedient until death. Philippians 2, 5 and 8. So how can we identify those who may say that they have Christ in them? Let's read here Ephesians 4, 21 and 22. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. How are we able to prove that we are true members of the church of Christ, that Christ is in us? Well, we have been taught the words of truth, the words of God. And how is it that we know that we have implemented these teachings that has been taught to us? We put off concerning the former conduct, which is his former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Could we say that we are true members of the church of Christ or we are in Christ? Or uh, could we say that we are true members of the faith if we still continue to do the things that is in a corrupt way of life or we involve ourselves in corruption? Of course not. Even if one will say, I'm a member of the Church of Christ, no matter how many thousands of times you will say you're a member of the Church of Christ. But if you are not able to fulfill the very role of being in Christ or having Christ in you, you are not a true member of the Church of Christ that way. Now, let's ask the Holy Scriptures another question. What changes should be done after putting off the old self? or the wicked way of life. Ephesians, the chapter is 4, verse 23 to 24. This is what we can read. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, into righteousness and holiness. How do we know that we have been taught? That the teachings that we have received, we have implemented them in our household. Well, we know that we have a renewed spirit of mind. We know that we have put on the new man. The old things have passed away. 
then it became new, as written in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 21. So it is but important on our behalf that we renew our ways of lives. Because anyone who say that they're members of the church of Christ, but they are in the flesh, they do not really belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, as written in Romans 8, 1 and 8, 9. So, saying you're a member of the church of Christ, but you do the works of the flesh. You involve yourself in corruption. You involve yourself in oppression. You involve yourself in money laundering or other wickedness and bribery and all these other things. Brothers and sisters, you cannot be a true member of the church of Christ that way. Because once you became a member of the church of Christ, the old things have passed away. When we were baptized in the watery grave, all of that should have been buried in the watery grave. And when we arise from the watery grave, we put on Christ the renewal of life. As written in the book of Romans, the chapter 6, verse 4. It is much important on our behalf that we renew our ways of life. That's the way to prove that we're members of the church of Christ and that we have been taught the words of God. So in order for us to reach this standard, even to our family members, all the way to our children and even the parents, what should be taught to them? Romans, the chapter 12, verse 1. Let's read the Bible. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. We know that we have been taught not to forsake our worship services, and that's the reason why we attend our worship services. We must understand that our children should attend not because they're just being influenced by us, but because they have that motivation of worshiping the Lord Almighty God. One might say, I don't skip the worship service. I attend the worship service. But the question is, are we amongst those who offer ourselves as a living sacrifice before the sight of God? Because if we are not amongst those that are not offering ourselves as a living sacrifice, which is wholly acceptable before the sight of God, then we cannot give the reasonable service that should be offered to our creator or to the lord almighty god let us be sure brothers and sisters we have these qualities within us so that we will not be disqualified could you imagine we went through so much already in striving to prove our loyalty and faithfulness to god and to the lord jesus christ and then at the end we'll just be disqualified none of us would want to be disqualified all of us would want to be qualified for the salvation that is to be given on Judgment Day. How is it that we prepare ourselves, especially in the days of our worship service? 63.1 of the book of Psalm. Let's read. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. How is it that we prepare ourselves for the days of our worship service? We should yearn for the Lord Almighty God. We should not be like those who are always looking at their watch. Eh, well, they keep watching, look, looking at their watch. It's not even a Rolex. It's only a Timex. But uh, even though if it's a Rolex or it's a Timex, if you're just there to feel that you're bored or uh, you feel that you're not interested, you're not really having that yearn that the Bible is see, saying to us. Do you know how King David yearned? You see, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. How do you feel when you are thirsty? Don't you want to quench that thirst? You probably buy a Gatorade or some kind of drink from 7-Eleven or somewhere, right? But after drinking that, aren't you refreshing? But is not the words of God more refreshing on for our souls? When we start to feel the comfort and the mercy of our God, because we prepare ourselves for the days of our worship, then we know that we have done the right preparation of worshiping our Lord Almighty God. Why, what, why is it that the Spirit, people of God, who understands the true worship that they offer to God. Why is it that they thirst? Why is it that they yearn for their God? In times of worship services, 63.2 of Psalm, let's read. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. 
what is the reason why that we are amongst those who yearn and thirst for our living God, especially in the times of our worship services, because all that we want to feel in the time of our assembly or our worship is the power that comes from the Lord Almighty God. And so what why is it that we would continue to always worship the Lord Almighty God? What is it that motivates us to continue to worship the Lord Almighty God? Let us continue reading 63.3. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Why is it that we never stop in worshiping our God? Because of the loving kindness of God. Did not we receive the loving kindness of God when God continued to set us aside to be his? Are we saying that we are better than others? Are we saying that we have more qualities than others? No, we have received this through the grace and mercy, loving kindness of our God. And it is better than life. Why? Because even if you lose your life here, there's a life that is reserved for you. In Christ, as written in Colossians 3, 1 and 2, that is a true life. That is eternal life, 6, 18 and 19 of First Timothy. So what is it that we would always want to do in the times of our worship service or when we gather for worship service? My lips shall praise you. How do we praise the Lord Almighty God? We enumerate in our prayers, even in our personal prayers, all the good things that God has done for us. And through means of singing of psalms of praises and through means of the prayers that are led, we praise the Lord Almighty God. We will never stop praising our God. We will always praise our God. Why? Because we know that we have received the loving kindness of our God. What else is it that we do in preparation for our worship service that we offer to the Lord Almighty God? Psalms 93, 5, your testimonies are very sure. Holiness, adorn your house, O Lord, forever. So we already have been taught even the place of worship, holiness, others there. And so therefore, even the clothes that we wear in the times of our worship service, even when we are in our own individual homes, when we attend, let us dress appropriately because we face our God in the times of our worship service. Don't go down to, to, to attend worship service with your shorts or your pajama, and then your hair is all sticking up like um, it was not combed or brushed or anything. You didn't even put, uh, you didn't even wash your face or you didn't even brush your teeth and everything. You just have that big teardrop dried in your eye. That's not the right way of preparing for worship, right? Of course, we prepare ourselves, brothers and sisters, so that at the time of our worship service, we know that holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever. We know God is holy, and those whom he called should also be holy. First Peter 1, 15 and 16. So what is it that will motivate us to fulfill all these things and to say that we could examine ourselves and that we will not be disqualified for this promise of salvation? 11, 6 of Hebrew, humble yours, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So what is this one factor that we should look into ourselves? Do we still have faith? Do you still have faith when you are in financial crisis or when you are really in need or when you are sick or when you are sad or persecuted? Do you still trust in your God? Has your trust uh, shifted to something else that may cause you to sin, to vices, to drugs, to all these other kinds of uh, beverages, alcoholic beverages that may separate you from your living God? Remember, those who will be rewarded are those who diligently seek him. And that's why it is a must on our behalf to have that kind of soul, heart, and also the mind in seeking God, yearning for his embrace, especially 
in times of worship. You already know that, brothers and sisters. When you are overwhelmed by all these problems, when you learn to have faith in your God, when you think that you really don't know where to go, God knows where to place you or to direct you in how you will be guided. That is how God works. But what is this one thing that we should all realize, brothers and sisters, so that we will be able to find out if we put our trust in our Lord Almighty God. First Peter 5, 6, and 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. How do we know that we still trust our God? We are humble enough to approach the mighty hand of God. There are times that we thought that I could do it on my own. I could do this by myself. But we know that we are completely helpless without our God. But because of the mercy of our God, when we humble ourselves, it is God himself who lifts us up. It is God himself who embraces us. That's one way of showing that God really knows and loves us. Then how is this or what is this that we should do when we are overwhelmed by all these problems? Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. What are your anxiety? What are your problems, brothers and sisters? What are the things that bothers you? You think that God don't know what's going on in your family or in your lives? God knows everything. God knows when you are already filled with all these kinds of burdens that is so heavy to carry. But that is a time that you would approach your almighty God. That's a time you will say, Lord, I surrender everything to you. I will give everything to you for as long as you will always be there for me. I will always follow you. I will always praise you. And how many times have God have done this for his people, especially those who trust in him. We have experienced the mercies of the Lord Almighty God. So let us fulfill the very great role of our holy calling that we have received. Let us ask our God to bless us even more in this life so that we will have enough to also give to those brethren of ours who are truly in need. And may our Father in heaven cure us from any kind of ailments that we may have. May he prolong our lives. May our Father continue to call all those people who are still under oppression and don't know what to do. God is just there waiting to humble you waiting for you to humble yourself so that he will help you out. So how, what is this? Why are we so sure that if we cast all our anxieties to God, that we are able to receive what we ask for? And how is this to be done? Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present, your request to God. What is this that we should do? We should present our requests. How do we present our requests? Through prayers. Why is it that God is capable to provide everything that we request? Let's read in 19. This is stated, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Why are we so sure that we are able to receive what we ask for when we entrust and cast all our cares to God. Because as what the Bible says, God will meet all your needs. So do you believe that, brethren? When it says all, it speaks of the peace within the household. It speaks of your needs your daily needs, everyday, everyday life, your clothing, your shelter, the help that you have, the place where you're to live. God knows all that. When we pray to our God, he will provide for as long as we trust in our living God. 
And that's why it is so difficult to turn our backs on him. Because we know that we could never forget the loving kindness, the protection that God gives for his people. How about when we are sick? What are we to do as instructed to us? 5.13 to 15. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And in prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. What is it that we should ask if by chance we are among those who are sick? Well, we should get prayed for because of our distance of one another. We know that the power of prayer, it can be also done. Brothers and sisters, we know that we can get cured through the mercy and help of the Lord Almighty God. Let us put our trust in him. When you feel the pains in your body or when you feel that you got, you're you getting sick, always approach your almighty God. He's the greatest healer. He's the one that could approach you. He's the one that could heal you. He gave life. He also gave everything we have. So why can he not cure your ailment? He can. And if we may have sinned against him, he will also forgive us for the sins that we have committed. So brethren, for instance, we find out that some of our family members are entrusted to us. So what is it that parents should always know and do for their families? Let's read in 3127. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. So what is it that parents should always do? She must know the affairs of what's going on, especially with their children. And so on behalf of the children, when you're always being admonished, when you're always being told things, don't think that we're just intruding in your personal lives. This is our duties and obligations to always know what's going on. Who are your friends? Who are who are you with? Uh, are they a bad influence? Because we know, brothers and sisters, bad companions ruins good character. That's written in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. And that's why parents are so concerned, always concerning about the friends and the people that surrounds their children. But if you lonely know deep in the hearts of the parents that our concern. It's because we love you and we want you to always be in the best status, to be always blessed in this life and in the life which is to come. That is the only great reason why that we would want to know and what is happening in your lives is because we want you to also make it to be saved and be with all those who have fought the good fight to enter God's kingdom on the day of judgment. So, if by chance we find out that our children are being led in the wrong path, what should parents really do? And what should children actually do when they are admonished? Proverbs 1, 10 and 50. My son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths. When we see that our children are going in the wrong direction, what is it that we should do? Well, we should admonish them not to go to that direction as also God is instructing them not to go in that direction. And behalf, on behalf of all the children, you should listen and cling to the teachings that is taught to us because all that of lessons is teaching us is to reach the spiritual maturity of our faith. And so that when the day of judgment arrives, we will all be set and prepared to meet with our Savior. For we have already reached the perfection to be blameless without spot. So that we would be able to meet with our Savior to enter God's kingdom when our Father sends His begotten Son. So that we will have salvation on the day of judgment. So what should we all do? Know that we will be able to overcome 
all these temptations that may be surrounding us. 2641 of the book of Matthew. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. What is it that we should all learn to do and have that habit of doing is to always pray. Because the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. When you are always filled with the spirit of God, you are able to always say no to temptation. When you are always near your God, you will always turn to him instead of turning to things that may separate you from your God. If you learn to love your God, if you learn to always cling to him, if you learn to always embrace him and his teachings every day of your, every day of your life, you can be sure that you will reach that spiritual maturity of your faith, which is also the very reason why Brother Irayo G. Manalo and Brother Felix Y. Manalo have always have that yearning in their hearts for the church to be prepared for the salvation which is to come. It's a matter of the people who receive the teachings and implementing them. If they work together, brothers and sisters, we will be able to reach the stature of preparation or being prepared to meet our Lord Jesus Christ. This is our lesson. Please rise and we will be led in our prayer. Our loving God in heaven, we have received your words and your instructions once again. Father, we are deeply touched by your reminders. Because some of us are being neglectful in our worship services. Some of us miss our worship service regularly. Some of us are still skeptical. Some of us are still lost. But with your kindness this evening, you reminded us once again, oh God, the importance of worshiping you, putting trust on you, oh Father, and to serve you as long as we live. Father in heaven, this moment, we open our hearts and our minds. We dedicate ourselves once again to you. We will worship you, oh Father. We will follow your will until we die. We know, Father, that with your mercy and your kindness, there is an eternal life that is in store for us. Father in heaven, may you continue to support our spiritual duties. Would you to continue to support our spiritual health so that we will be able to continue further in our journey? Thank you so much, Father, this evening. You have utilized again our brother, reminding us of our spiritual duties, the importance of worship service, oh, Father. Sometimes we are negligent. Sometimes we don't give importance to our worship service. Sometimes when we attend the service, we don't even dress up properly, oh Father. And if you have found us so doing, please forgive each one of us. Continue to guide us, oh Father, until we reach our perfection. Forgive us for the shortcomings that we have done. May you continue to maintain our unity in the spirit of the last Sogo. And we will be able to continue your Christian thesis that you're giving us until we reach our salvation. May you bless our brethren that are sick, our brethren that are losing hope, our brethren that are lost, our brethren that are not attending our worship service. Through this medium of this technology, oh Father, may you help us find and look for them to join us in the true services unto you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. 
May you continue to guide us every day in our life. Sometimes, Father, we know that this world is going to end. We know that trials and tribulations will intensify in our life. But what we're digging unto you, oh Father, because it's strong in faith, so that nothing will hinder us in our services unto you. We pray for our brethren and loved ones in dangerous places. Our brethren in different parts of the world that are in isolation. Father, may this technology be utilized, O oh God, that they will be able to join us in our worship services. And we pray our brethren, our loved ones that are in dangerous places, that they will not be inconvenient, O oh Father. They will be able to join us in our services unto you. We trust that you have heard our pleadings. You will heal us from any sicknesses, sicknesses that we have. You continue to give us our support materially and spiritually. And also, Father, we will bless our household and our loved ones. You will bless every family of your people. So that during worship services and during the weekends, you will be able to find each one of us glorifying, worshiping your most holy name. We trust that you have heard our humble pleadings. All of this we beg in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.